Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. And please turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Romans chapter 3. We're going to uh, read verses 10 on to verse 18. This is... um. This is an unexpected video today. Got uh, quite a few videos to come here. And um, uh, for example, there's a, a video that a brother sent me uh, about uh, my great, uh, immigration in a way, uh, immigration that uh, needs to be tended to, um, which has to, uh, going to be talking about the Jesuits. But a beloved sister sent me this video. Um, and it's going off of the previous video um, about this transgenderism thing, okay? Now, the link for this video will be in the description box. We are actually, this is a 10-minute video, and we are going to watch this video in its entirety, okay? But I want you, while watching this, while we are watching this together, I want you to pay attention to some of the things that are said here, and I want you to pay close attention because, you know, this this individual that we're going to see is uh, detransitioned, and I have seen now several detransitioning videos where people who are going who are uh, who are men who went to women are going back to being. Uh, men, same with women. Um, I, I've seen several of them, actually. I have. Um, and several of them that I have seen, God gets brought up. That, uh, like you're going to see. But it's like, okay. Okay. But with Every, without exception, with every detransitioning video that I have seen, I've seen several. I haven't seen tons of them because I got a lot of other things to do. But um, I have yet to see one detransitioning video where the person who is detransitioning takes full responsibility for what they did to themselves. Actually, what I see a lot of in these detransitioning videos is the woman that thou gavest me to be with, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. That's from Genesis chapter 3. That's the Adamic nature as it's referred to. Taking a half-hearted responsibility, but before you take responsibility, you blame this, that, and the other thing. So there are other things that come first before you taking a partial responsibility. That is referred to as the Adamic nature. And that is called the Adamic nature, nature because that is exactly what Adam did when the Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, who was in the garden, uh, when he gave Adam the chance to, to man up, to take responsibility for his actions. And see, this is the trait of the con a lost convert. The lost convert. This is what easy believism gets its springboard from. Okay, Romans chapter 3, you know, brethren, you know this by heart. You who are saved, you know this by heart. But see, this is, this is actually one of the more, more, most hated portions in Scripture to the lost converts. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none 
that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an up, open sepulcher, not supplucker. Thank you, brother. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of, of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Why is that so hated? You know, people will ask me, lost people who I get the chance to witness to, you know, and they're actually curious, they're interested, they want to hear truth, you know, and, you know, we give them a set of scriptures. It's like, well, where should I, where should I begin? The Book of Romans. Book of Romans, huh? Yeah. Because the Book of Romans is written to you personally. It's about you. Every time I say that to someone, the, the same, without exception, it's about me. Yeah, it's about you. See, that's the point. See, if you will, can, you know, you keep reading um, Romans chapter 3, you get to verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, yes, all have sinned. Yes, but see what easy believism does. They use the truth of Scripture right there as an umbrella to hide from taking responsibility for their actions. And when you have that, when they, the easy believism devils, when Jesuitism uses the truth of Scripture as an umbrella term for people to hide under to escape responsibility, People are not taking responsibility. This is why Romans chapter 3 verses 10 on verse 18 is so hated amongst the easy believism heretics and lost converts. Because Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 2, and Romans chapter 3 is there for what? One thing thou lackest. The Lord in the book of Romans points the finger right at you and points the finger. It, does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, there are only three when you, you okay, you strip down the, you strip it down, you take the meat off that bone. There are only three problems to mankind. And you can try to get as technical, and I've dealt with this before via email. I've dealt with this before. You can try to get uber technical about it. There are only three problems known to mankind. Only three. Sin, sorrow, and death. And oh, oh, I've, I've, I've dealt with some people who have, who have brought up some very creative and colorful arguments. It's like there are more problems than sin, sorrow, and death. No, there aren't. They all base from those three. And interesting, Satan wants you to believe that one God consists of three persons, right? Hmm. Sin, sorrow, and death. It doesn't matter how technical, how cute you want to be and say there's more than that. It funnels into whatever it is, whatever your problem is, okay? Whatever your problem is, sin, sorrow, and death. It funnels into one of those. That's it, okay? That's it. And Romans, the book of Romans, chapters 1, 2, and 3 specifically deal with that in you. That, they deal with that in you. 
Well, Brad, don't you think they should, like in Matthew chapter 11, learn of Jesus Christ? Absolutely. But you need to know why you're going to the Lord. See, Christianity tells you that you're going to the Lord because he loves you and because he just wants to bless you with nice things. Those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Why did we go to the Lord? 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You look around, brethren. And you look around, especially in Christianity. Especially in Christianity, which ought to be the place of humility. But see, it's a place of humility for self-gain. Not in a humility out of contrition because it was your hand that held the hammer that put him on the cross. It's all messed up. Brethren, you know this. I blame myself. I am the man. Like Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. It's my fault. And as long as people... Yeah, there's my wife. Oh, there's my wife. And as long as people are not taking responsibility for their actions. Thus it will be. Thus it will be. And we who are truly saved, I am a sinner who is chief. I held the hammer. My hand held the hammer putting the nails in the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. My hands put the thorns on his head. Nobody forced me to do anything. A devil didn't make me do it. I did it. Some people will even in a very clever way to avoid responsibility will even, well, it's my flesh. It's my flesh. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But see, as Romans chapter 7 deals with, okay, our spirit and soul are housed within this flesh. Taking responsibility. Taking responsibility. And until people start doing that, Things are just going to continually get worse and worse. And when you got Christianity basically going around saying it's not your fault. When the faith that was once delivered onto the saints said <laughs> it is your fault. And you you better you better go to the Lord in contrition, uh, brokenness, you know, repentance. You better fear him. So enough of that. We are going to look at this video. Now, with what we just talked about, with what we just discussed. Check this out. Check this out. Next guest shares the gut-wrenching story of someone who went through hell and back in a desperate bid to cure his childhood trauma. Billy Burley transitioned from being a biological male to a trans woman after being encouraged to change gender by the U.S. medical establishment. Does that sound? Being encouraged. Hmm. Being encouraged by the Jesuit government. 
Mm. It's not gotten to the point where it's convert or die here in America. Not yet. But you see that you see the setup for this. Do you see the setup already? Okay. Do you see the setup already? All right. Let's continue. Familiar to you? He suffered seven years of grueling surgeries under the promise it would cure him of deep-rooted depression, but still never found the happiness he was promised, resulting. Seven years of grueling things, yes, yes, that he was promised, yes. This individual was deceived, absolutely, absolutely. But being deceived and being forced into something are not the same thing, okay? Like I've said, I, I have seen several detransitioning videos um, and everyone that I have seen given a link to uh, let us reason together, you and I, because I have yet to see. And hey, 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 hey. If you know or if you have seen a detransitioning video where the one who is detransitioning actually takes 110% full responsibility for their actions and blames themselves, put it in the, uh, the comment section. I would like to see it. I would like to see it. I really would. Okay, I would like to see it. But let's continue. ...in him detransitioning. Now, after finding faith in God and... Fi faith in... Do you notice what he said? Here, here, here. Pay, pay very close attention. He was promised, resulting in him detransitioning. Now, after finding faith in God and finally feeling... Did you hear that? Did you hear what he said? Faith in gods? Did you hear that? Let, 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 one more time. He was promised, resulting in him detransitioning. Now, after finding faith in gods and finally... Faith in gods. God the Father, God the Son... God the Holy Ghost. That was a slip of the tongue, Brad. You make slips of the tongue. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. We all make mistakes. Yes, we do. I make mistakes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Was that a mistake? You be the judge. Feeling comfortable in his own skin, Billy has a stark warning for the nearly 8,000 children awaiting NHS gender identity treatment in the UK and their parents who think going down the trans path will magically cure them of their troubles. I'm delighted to say that Billy joins me now. Hi, Billy. Hey, Mark. A privilege to have you on the show. Can I start by asking you what traumas you were trying to heal when you transitioned into a woman? What traumas were you trying to heal? So it was the traumas, the traumas themselves, not he himself. And I, I gotta, I gotta say, um, this this Billy. When you when we hear what this Billy went through, I mean, cause, I mean, you look at this this individual. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, this is sad. This is sad. This is sad. This is, this is really sad. Like um, most of the detransitioning videos that I have actually watched, they're very sad. Very sad, okay? But you see how this is being set up, okay? Now, if this individual were truly saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, it's my fault. I, I, no, it's it's traumas. I I'm a sinner. I did this to me. Okay. You cannot blame 
circumstance. You cannot blame environment, which so many people do, okay? You have to take responsibility for yourself. That is why that is why, okay, easy believism is so popular. That is why with those children from the previous video and a sister, you, the, you see that video? Sister in that video gave the, well, just a beautiful comment and hit the nail right on the head. Great comments in that video, the last video. Great comments, great scripture, great comments. But, um... Like those little children from that, that, that scoundrel Jonathan Jolly, okay? Those children in that video, uh, those children, they don't know better. But see, what's going to make things worse for them is if an easy believism heretic gets a hold of them. The impossible is possible with God. But man, I'll tell you what, boy. An easy believism heretic get a hold of one of them kids. Um, their goose is cooked. But it's the taking of responsibility. It's the taking. We who are saved, we take responsibility for our actions. Okay? We don't blame other people. There are legitimate circumstances. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. But you cannot blame your circumstance. You can't blame your environment. You can't. You can't. Because your circumstance and your environments don't define you. If they do, then you got a problem. Give you an example? Sure. The Garden of Eden. They had the perfect, pristine environment. Think about it. They saw God. God walked in the garden amongst them. Okay? They had a pristine, unadulterated relationship with the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Perfect, pristine environment. But what happened? Yea, hath God said? Hmm. Yea, hath God said? Go against what he said, and your eyes will be opening. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And then what happens? The snowball effect. When... Our Father confront. You know, we'll we'll get to this because you you have to see this. Go 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 to Genesis chapter three. Okay. The simplicity, people, and and that's and that's what makes true salvation difficult for most. You gotta get over yourself, buddy boy. You can't blame other people. You can't be like, well, if you hadn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. I, I've encountered that so much with people who are supposedly saved and who are Christians. It, it, it's, it's vomitous. It's vomitous. Why not rather take wrong? Okay? <laughs> but Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Let's begin at verse 8. All right? They, they eat from the tree. Their eyes are open. Okay? The fruit, what it was, is insignificant. The fact that they did contrary to what God said, that's the point. Okay? Yeah, has God said. All right? Verse 8. In Genesis chapter 3. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. What we are be uh, looking at, okay? If I forgot to say that, forgive me. Because like I said, this is, this is very impromptu. 
And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam, his wife, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. God himself was walking in the garden. Okay? People, our enemies, will get very, very creative on how to debunk this. And um, my best friend and I, we went through a whole thing where he was doing, he was bringing up, you know, some of the arguments that our enemies would bring up, which was, and they will bring up quite a bit. Um, God himself, God the Father, a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ was right there. God, you know, we're made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay. God was walking in the garden. Okay. God was walking in the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? God knew where he was, but he was like, come on, guys, you're hiding. Come on, come on. God already knew what had transpired. Okay. He already did. God knows everything. You're not going to hide anything. Okay? And he said, Adam said unto God, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. God already knew what happened. Okay? God already knew. All right? And he said, Now this is God the Father giving Adam the chance to man up to be a man, to take responsibility and accountability for one's actions. Okay? Eve was left by herself. Where Adam was, we do not know. Okay? Eve was left by herself. Satan came along and tempted Eve. Okay? Okay? All right? That's, you know, in, for, in Timothy, uh, Eve was deceived first because Satan went to Eve first. Okay? Okay? All right? Because where was Adam? We don't know. But here the Lord, who knew what happened already, he was giving Adam the chance to repent. You read in the book of Revelation how the Lord gives uh, that uh, Jezebel, the prophetess, who teaches, his, uh, who seduces his people to commit fornication with idols. You read in uh, Revelation chapter 2, I believe it is, where the Lord says, I gave her space to repent, and she repented not. That's our Lord's mercy. That's our Lord's grace, okay? He's giving Adam the chance, verse 11, okay, to man up. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And of course, atheists, you know, and so, well, you say God knows everything. He didn't, what? He knew he was just giving Adam the chance to man up. What Adam should have done. I disobeyed you, Lord. I chose to eat from the tree. I should have been there for my wife. I should have stopped that when she offered me the, the fruit. You know, slap it out of her hands like, what are you doing? It's my fault, Lord. I disobeyed you. I disobeyed you. Please forgive me. Well, what about Satan? Yeah. The Lord, who told thee that thou was naked? Satan? Yes. That old serpent. But see, you read Genesis on your own time, uh, verses 1 on verse 5. Do, do you see force anywhere in there? Do you see, when you read Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5, show me force. Show it to me. Come on. Show it to me. Show it to me. Show it to me. 
oh, some might bring up uh, uh, um, Proverbs chapter 7 where it says she forced him because of the subtlety, right? Mm. <laughs> when he was already a young man void of understanding. Okay, hold your place here and go to Proverbs chapter 7. Okay, go to Proverbs chapter 7. Not being ignorant of our enemy's devices. Okay, they'll go to Proverbs chapter 7 about the forest thing. Okay, right, right there, yes. Verse 21 in Proverbs 7. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. So see, bud, there's force. Um, but what about verse 7? I beheld among the simple ones, O oh, ye simple, when will you, will, when will you, verse, uh, uh, Proverbs 8, verse 5, O oh, ye simple, understand wisdom, the fear of the Lord, okay? And ye fools who say in their heart, there is no God, be he of us understanding heart. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So when you look in Proverbs 7, and you'll say, well, here, there, see, Brad, verse 21, she forced him. Verse 7. And beheld, well, verse 6 and 7. I, you know what? Let's read verse 8 as well. 6, 7, and 8. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones and beheld among the simple ones I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding which is departing from evil. So this simple one, this young man was not has not departed from evil. He had no understanding. He was not departing from evil. And what does today's uh, reading in Ecclesiastes uh, say to us in verses 9 and 10? Uh, Ecclesiastes 11, 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy heart, and let thy... Uh, rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart... Cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, Remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and youth of vanity. Verse 6 again in Proverbs 7 on to verse 8. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, void of departing from evil, passing through the street Near her corner. Near whose corner? The corner of the harlot. That guy said finding faith in gods. And he went the way to her house. So, this young man, when you come to verse 21 and you want to say, there's force, Brad. Uh, this young man already, well, number one, he wasn't departing from evil. And number two, he was going to. He was walking near. He was intermingling. He was going to the house of the harlot anyway. Okay. Again. Show me force. That young man in Proverbs 7 already had no understanding. And when you have no understanding, which is departing from evil, 
How easy is it for Satan, through the Jesuit order, his church, Roman Catholicism, to come in and bring you to worship God? <laughs> Back to Genesis chapter 3. Where are you doing? Genesis chapter 3. Verse 11 again. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman? The woman whom thou gavest to be with me she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So you see Adam blaming first the woman and God, ultimately blaming God. Ultimately blaming God, because God was the one who gave him the woman, right? Adam blew it. They were still going to absolutely because they disobeyed. They did what God said not to do. Okay, the very first dispensation in Scripture is works, and you got those easy believism jerks saying it's faith alone from beginning to end. When the very first dispensation proves them wrong. Okay, dealing with a bunch of geniuses on that side. But see, the ignorance of God's word is their weapon. And the fact that people don't want to take responsibility is the ammunition for that weapon. So Adam blew it right there. Adam blew it. They were, just like with the children of Israel, going to be kicked out of Jerusalem when Nebuchadnezzar was knock, knock, knocking on their door. Whoa, okay? The severity of it could have been lessened if they would have bowed the knee, softened their neck, and would have taken the correction and the punishment. No. What does man do? What does religious man do? Blames others. And of course, we got to read, we got <laughs> we got to read verse 13. So, Adam blew it. Okay, and you, you, you women, you know, that who Satan is using the feminist movement, which, and you think about the feminazi movement uh, of how that has ingratiated into the society of America at large, and people, women watch these feminazi um, television shows which depict men as sniveling little wimps that couldn't even lift a fork unless they had a domineering woman over them, okay? Satan knows that the feminazi movement is going to be destroyed because that man of sin, that man of sin, the son of perdition, um, Satan is going to, in the uh, time of Jacob's trouble, is going to inhabit a man, not a woman, okay? But, you know, the strong woman, the alpha female, yeah, okay. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? Giving it and giving, okay, Adam blew it. Go to the woman now, okay, okay. Are you gonna, are you gonna take responsibility? What does she do? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. The devil made me do it. There's no force. When you are without understanding, that is departing from evil, when you are your own judge of what is good and evil, um, yeah, how easy for the charmer to come along, charming never so wisely, and to fool you. Like this individual. Okay? Now, but enough of that. Let's continue. The traumas that I had as a, a child is I had this reoccurring thought, and it started in the fifth grade, that God made a mistake. I'm a girl. And that's the exact thought that plagued me for all of my younger life into a... God made a mistake, okay? Now, now listen to him. ...adulthood. And that thought actually um, plagued me so much that I, I had to deal with it, Mark. 
I had to deal with it. And a lot of people may turn to maybe drugs, alcohol, something. But I actually turned uh, to working out as hard as I could to move the pain out of my mind and into my body. And that worked for a number of years. But Mark, when I uh, got into college, uh, you could say all of that closet that I pushed all of my emotions into, the door blew off the hinges. And at that point, I, I had to start surgeries. Or at that point, I actually uh, um, sought help for my mental condition. From where? From where? From where? He 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 stated, God. He thought God made a mistake. Now you're gonna. Enough of my talking here. But... Would you say, looking back on it, that your decision to transition into becoming um, a female uh, was someone else's decision, or was it yours? Now, the reporter, get a load of that, okay? The reporter just, the reporter basically just asked this individual, well, whose fault was it? Okay? Uh, he, this guy said he found faith in God's, okay? And he just said about, he just mentioned, well, God made a mistake, okay? Now, Whose fault was it? He basically, the reporter basically just asked this guy. Whose fault was it? Whose fault was it? The situation that I had, because I transitioned back around 2000, when I sought help from the mental health community, um... I went in saying, I want to be healed with, uh, I, I want to stay man, I want to be healed, but I got this battle that is going on in my mind. And after five years of trying to deal with that battle, I told the therapist that I wanted to transition. I did a lot of reading in, in books, journal articles, I tried to learn what was the cause and what was the solution for my problem. There is none righteous, no, not one. Are you, am, are we to believe that all through this time that there was no one of the Church of the Living God that ever approached this individual? Are we to believe that? Is that possible? Maybe. Maybe. So They're going to learn the truth sooner or later. Uh, I'll tell you what. By the time this individual was in college, they were past that point of accountability. Uh, uh, point of accountability. They knew. He knew. He knew. Okay, in college, this individual knew. Okay, he knew. All right, one like one of them little kids of the, 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 the jolly jerk. Okay, by the time that individual was in college, he knew. He knew. He knew the truth. He didn't know, know the truth of salvation, but he knew what he was doing was wrong. Mm. And everything that I read told me that I had to transition, that I possibly had a birth defect, that my... Everything you read, you weren't reading the scripture, boy mind when I was in uterine was washed with the wrong hormones and to fix that birth defect I had to change my body to match my mind and when I told my therapist after five years of seeing her and trying to fix my problems that that's what I wanted to do she gave me a hug and she told me Billy I knew you were going to arrive at this decision one day I didn't know it was going to take you this long and uh, she said, we will walk this road together. And she gave me the letters I needed to go to start on testosterone blocker, on estrogen, and to start the transition process. So it was, uh, 
my decision, but once I made that decision at that point, uh, it's... Now, see right there, he said, it was my decision to go and do that to himself, okay? He takes responsibility for that. Yes, he does. He takes his responsibility that it was my decision to do that to myself, okay? Yes, he did. He just said there. But now, okay, did he take responsibility for whose fault it was, okay? Whose fault was it? It was he. He said, I made the decision to go and do this to me. And look at that. Look at those pictures. On the left, that's what this, this guy looked like as a woman. And that's what he looks like today. Okay? All right? He said he took responsibility for doing that to himself. But... But... As the reporter asked, whose fault was it? He was blaming other people. He was, um, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. He did, this is, this is textbook, Adamic. Yeah, okay, I chose to do this to myself, but ultimately, it was someone else. She embraced me and helped me uh, through the complete transition. Uh, so therefore, the safeguarding that looking back on it you needed was not there. Um, what procedures did you have done? You've mentioned a hormonal treatment, but you've had operations as well, haven't you, Billy? He said the safeguarding wasn't there. So this interviewer, interviewer is playing along with us like, well, yeah, it was someone else. Like, yeah, you made the decision. Yeah, it, yeah, she did give me of the tree, and yeah, I did eat. A great number of them, Mark. The very first operation I had was actually a, um, a, a penal inversion. And in that very first surgery, I also had a brow shave and an Adam's apple shave. And after coming out of the operating room, the surgeons and uh, the nurses could not stop the bleeding from my new artificial female genitalia. They had to put more gauze into the cavity. They had to put a sandbag on my lower abdomen. I also had to receive a blood transfusion and plasma. So my scheduled two week stay in the hospital for that procedure turned into a three week stay. And very fortunately, I'm still here. The bleeding did stop and I was able to recover from that surgery. Then after that surgery, I had a number of other surgeries, including Mark voice feminization surgery. And in that surgery, after the surgeon uh, took a knife and and uh, uh, cut my throat and uh, got to my uh, vocal cords. He tied sutures around my vocal cords and I was in twilight sleep. So for that surgery, Mark, I had to actually come out of the anesthesia to wake up some and I had to speak while the surgeon actually tightened the sutures uh, so that he could adjust the tightness so that I would uh, achieve a higher pitch voice. And so I went through all of these surgeries, believing what uh, the therapist conveyed to me, what the journal article said, and that I would eventually find my peace as soon as my body uh, matched my mind. And Mark, I didn't find it. It was never there. After seven years of trying, it just wasn't there. I got goosebumps, man. You remember um, hearing about how the Germans, Nazi Germany, experimented on the Jews and many other people uh, trying to create the super soldier, the Jesuit order who are experts at torture? Only the agents of the Vatican 
could figure out how to cut someone's throat. And as uh, my brother from Croatia, you know how you tune your guitar uh, using harmonics to tune your guitar strings, okay? So basically with the vocal cords of a, of a man, okay, as if it were a guitar string, sutures to mess with a person's voice. You know, in Genesis chapter 11, I believe it is, when a man gets together, they build temples. Or, or well, what is that in Genesis chapter 11? Go there instead of messing that up. Like I said, this is very impromptu, but, you know, uh, where is that? Uh, uh, verse 4 in Genesis 11. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, worshiping mankind, worshiping the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And look at what the Lord says. In verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. The evil of man has imagined to remove the phallus. That's what happened, okay? And to a brow shave, an Adam's apple shave, Okay? And manipulating the voice box of somebody as if you were tuning with harmonics guitar strings. That's man for you. That's man for you. Brethren, people, that's man for you. And you think we're evolving and man has become better over time? Look at me. You're stupid. You are absolutely stupid. This is what man can do. And this isn't even the extent. Man can create disease. <laughs> It's not funny. I just learned yesterday, for example. Oh, <laughs> can have a whole lot of fun with this. There's a new variant out, which they have called, I'm not making this up, <laughs> the Kraken. <laughs> it's not funny, but, ah, uh, yeah, the Kraken, the Kraken variant. <laughs> oh, young wannabe Jesuits must be very proud <laughs> that they named a variant after him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That I'm. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. This is what man can do. This is what man can do. From creating uh, radioactive fleas to go in, uh, what was it, in Japan? What was it? I believe it was the Japanese that were experimenting with radioactive fleas. The Germans with all their experiments. And then nowadays you got people who can destroy the body. Cut, cut the guy's throat. And manipulating? Well, the guy was basically in Twilight. That's like you're half out of it and half with it. Okay? So, and you, you heard what he said. He had to be awake and speak. So, as if it were a guitar. Let's, let's finish this up. Come on. 
It, it didn't happen. And, and you don't have male genitalia now, do you, even though you've transitioned back to being male? With uh, surgery, I've had that body part removed in the theory that that would make me happy. And flat out, it did not make me happy. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate because I'm, I'm married now. I have two step uh, daughters. And, um, but you can say that I'm not a functioning male, a man in that respect. In well, I'm thought. very happy for you that you're so happily married now and those uh, stepdaughters, I'm sure they adore their stepfather. And I congratulate you on your journey uh, you found the faith and love of God. I know you're in a. I know you're in a really good place now. Faith and love and God. Where is the? I'm a sinner who is chief. Where is the pleading? He he. Now these last three minutes. Okay, check this out. Okay. Check out what this, this individual says. Um, I don't believe this individual is saved. Because what happens when we who are saved, I am the man. I am, a, I, I am the man. Okay? He took a half-hearted responsibility when it came to his surgery. Yeah. She gave me of the tree and I did eat. And this 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 twit interviewer, you know, egging him along in a way. But, but pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. Okay? I mean, it's good that this guy is no longer parading around as a woman. But, you know, if you had gone, I mean, if, if you have gone to those lengths and you truly were saved, how could not the praises of the Lord Jesus Christ be on your lips continually after being brought out of a, out of a somewhat of a hell as that? I say somewhat because hell is burning, never ending. Okay. Unfortunately, this Billy individual, I don't for one second believe he's a saved individual. I don't. I do not believe it. Do not believe it. You found the piece that surgery didn't give you. So big congratulations on your journey. You look brilliant. Uh, I know that my viewers and listeners will just be absolutely on the edge of their seat listening to your story. Um, can I ask you what you would say to any young people in this country, in the UK, uh, watching or listening, who are considering transitioning or their families? What would your message be, Billy? OK, OK. All right. Say, okay, let, he's saved, let's say he's saved. You have this opportunity. Once in a lifetime thing, okay? Uh, people are watching you. What do you do? You're saved? What do you do? What do you do? This, what do you do? What, what, what should, if he were saved, what should he have done? Hmm? What should he have done? This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Do not do it. Absolutely. Do not do this. I have made many mistakes and coming back and transitioning back to male, I've actually have identified some of my problems that I had as, as a kid. Because okay, I made many mistakes, but the problems I had as a kid. Don't do this. Good, good. You're saying don't do it. That that's that that's good. That's good. Yes, it is. Give give him credit on that. But let's continue. As being very skinny, uh, having a speech impediment, 
um, being dyslexic, turning words around in my mind and not learning how to read until much later in life. Skinny, speech impediment, uh, dyslexic. Oh, so it was all this, this, and this. Not that he was a sinner who was chief. I learned that I had a lot of trouble as a, as a kid. And instead of having gender dysphoria, out and out I had dysphoria. I was a confused young kid. And that confusion manifested its way uh, into gender dysphoria. And I was trying to find acceptance, significance, and security by changing my body to match my mind. And that was wrong because, uh, Mark, also I was sexually abused when I was in the sixth grade. So that contributed to my problems as well. So I have talked to a number of other detransitioners and also people who haven't detransitioned. And what I have learned, including myself as a data point, is that we have problems as kids, as children, and we don't deal with them. So the mental health professionals, instead of doing gender affirming therapy, I uh, should be doing um, trauma therapy to help children deal with the childhood traumas that we carry into adulthood. Uh, our acceptance, significance, and security is not found by chopping off body parts. We need help. We need therapy. In Christ! Not gender affirming therapy. Uh, Billy Burley, I and my viewers and listeners are humbled to hear your story. Uh, you've got amazing courage to come on the national television airwaves to, to tell your story. And uh, on behalf of my viewers and listeners, we wish you well. Uh, we wish you every happiness and your family in the future. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Billy Burley there with that. Uh, That's sad. That that's that's really sad. And talk about that. You see how that man ended that? It was this, this, this. I was abused. I had this. I had that. I had that. I was this, 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 and this. Didn't take full responsibility. Didn't. He took a half-hearted responsibility. Yeah, I chose to do this to myself. Yeah, yeah. So they gave me of the tree and I did eat. Yeah. And you would, and, and this is what is so, so sad, which makes it very, I, 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 I watched the one where this, um, this woman um, who, was detransitioning from being a man back to a woman. You know, had her had the paps removed and everything. Um, it's it's sad to watch because you would think that what these people put themselves through and the roller coaster when you start messing with what God gave you, you would think that a person like that spirit's own body, would be at that broken state. But it also shows you. It also shows you. And, and, and about what, how the guy says therapy. Therapy. If he were a saved man, if that was, if that Billy were a saved man, where was his exhortation, exhortation to go to Christ? Hmm? Well, Brad, maybe he, maybe the people on the TV didn't want that to happen. That's most likely the truth. But, hey, brother, sister, would that have stopped you? Would it have stopped me? Hmm? You're given an opportunity like that? Hmm? Well, then people wouldn't have seen it. It would have been out there regardless. Someone would have seen it. Someone would have. Yeah, the therapy. Therapy, yeah. 
In Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Yeah. This shows you, too, exactly what uh, the scriptures tell us in Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, Verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. It's really sad when watching some of these detransitioning videos, like I said, because... You would think, man, it's like, <laughs> I mean, wow, what that individual went through, you know, how, how, how low does one have to become? How low does one need to be brought? Very low, very low, because until you reach a point when you are going to accept responsibility for you putting Jesus Christ on the cross and stop trying to hide your... If anything, okay, that Billy, I don't, they, they didn't talk about it, okay? The one guy had a fraudulent slip and said God's at the beginning, okay? Okay, people make, I, I, I make slips with my tongue too, okay? But... If I were to make a guess, one of two things, that guy, which I, well, actually one, that Billy guy, his God is either the God of Catholicism or the God of easy believism. One of the two, which is only one, Satan's church. Because, see, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints deals with you personally. Well, the religions that come from the whore, such as easy believism, you can hide under that little umbrella we're all sinners and kind of have a half-hearted thing like, hey, yeah, she did, she, she did give me up the tree and I did eat. Like I said, if you have seen a detransitioning video of one of these sad people who actually man up and take the responsibility for what they did, that Bill, he, I made a lot of mistakes. That's, that's just an acknowledgement, okay? That's not owning it. That's not taking responsibility. Okay? You saw in the latter end of that video, it was something else. Here's him. It was something else, 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 else. And if you're saved, that's not what it's like. And to those of you Christians who just believe, you're irate by me saying that because you don't understand because you have never been truly broken. How many of you truly think you are saved because you just believe and never were broken of your self-righteousness, but you have hidden yourself? Well, we're all sinners. And without exception, you corner an easy believism devil with this. For example, Jeffrey Dahmer, I believe, is in heaven. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. King Manasseh is in heaven. And you, you just believe you're not as bad as they are, right? But see, that's what you, you people don't get. If you're truly saved, you're right. I'm not as bad as Dhamma. I was worse. Brad, you didn't, no, no, I didn't kill or stuff like that. But, you know, that's, 
That's taking responsibility. I was worse. Okay? Dahmer's in heaven. Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. King Manasseh is in heaven. Okay? Until you start dealing with your part, how you crucified Christ. He died 2,000 years ago. I had nothing to do with it. You've missed it right there, pal. You've missed it right there. Yes, Christ died 2,000 years ago. But it was my hand, as, but it was my hand that held the hammer to put the nails through the hands and through the feet. I sinned against God. And I deserve to go to hell. But see, I went to him. It's like, Lord, I did this to you. And I make no excuse. I deserve to go to hell. Please, Lord, if you will, forgive me. And have mercy on me and save me. Because you died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures because of what I did to you. And that's what's being avoided today. And that, the generations that are coming, being brought up, that is what has been avoided today. So, that is, uh, this was not the video I was expecting to do today. <laughs> not at all. But, um, like I said, I was sent this and I watched it. And it's like, hmm. It's one of those things where it's like, I want it to be, it's like, I want to be, oh, praise the Lord. But then I listen to it and it's like, wait, 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 wait. That there's something missing here. There's something missing. Plus, like I said, in this video, with this video, you, you see the depths that man will go to. What Satan will go through. Through man. To destroy what God has made. Thank you for sending this to me, by the way, beloved. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully... This will help some of you at least. The beginning step is, this is faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And then having sorrow for what you did to the Lord. And then in humility going to him, I can't save myself. I'm not a good person. You're my only hope, Lord. Okay? That's the rest of Romans chapter 3, which the easy believism heretic focuses on avoiding what leads up to it. And when you avoid scriptural repentance... That's going to be it for this video. There may come a second video today. It will not be on the this the main channel. It would be on the backup channel. Um, like I said, got a lot of stuff going on. I got a, um, uh, something that a brother sent me uh, to touch on yet. And uh, that thing about this <laughs> uh, lost relative of the village people uh, thing to address that a brother sent me. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff coming. But I um, had to... Be instant in season, out of season. So, anyway, that's it. I'm going to get this uploaded. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, brethren. Pray for one another and be there for one another. See you in the next video. Bye bye.